Math 1332, Chapter 10, Probability and Counting Techniques, Section 1, Basic Concepts of Probability, Video 2, Theoretical Probability. In the previous video, we kind of discussed the essence of probability and introduced some key terms. In this video, we're going to more formally define how to calculate theoretical probability in terms of those, well, those terms that we defined. However, I'm pretty confident you already intuitively understand the concept of theoretical probability. Let's see if I'm right. Let's get some highlighting action going here. You are captured by a wizard. He places you in a dungeon. Ha ha ha. Not sure why a wizard would sound like that. There are four doors marked A, B, C, and D. Behind one of the doors is a hungry dragon waiting to eat whatever opens that door. Behind one of the doors is a bomb with a string attached to the door. Opening the door will cause the bomb to explode, killing whoever opens the door. Behind one of those doors are 25 spears, which will be triggered by opening the door, killing whoever opens it. And behind one of the doors is a tunnel that leads to freedom. You are forced to pick a door and open it. There are no clues as to what lies behind each door. What are your chances of survival? I get the feeling you may already know the answer. There are four doors. One of them leads to survival. Well, I should say leads to freedom. There's no guarantee that if you get free, then you'll survive. So we'll just pretend it says, what are your chances of freedom? Well, do you know it? If you need some help, here's a picture of four doors labeled A, B, and C, and D. Behind one of them is a dragon. Behind another one is a bomb. Behind another one are spears waiting to spear you. And behind one of them is freedom uh, without knowing which door is which. So do you know what your chances of survival are? If you said... One in four, you're correct. You could also say one fourth, but you could also say 25%. So why is that? Well, it's really not that hard to see. There are four doors and one of them is survival. So one out of four. If you understand this, then you understand the essence of theoretical probability. The essence of it is what fraction of the sample space is what we're looking for. In this case, one fourth of the doors gives us freedom. By the way, what are your chances of not surviving? Three out of four. Remember, you have to open a door. In essence, it's the fraction of the time you achieve a specific outcome, theoretical probability that is. But as in all mathematics, we need a more rigorous definition it's actually fairly straightforward using the key terms we defined in the previous video. Remember those terms were probability experiment, outcome, event, and sample space. Suppose a probability experiment has sample space S where all of the outcomes in S are equally likely. Let E be an event, in other words, a subset of S then the probability of event E denoted PE is defined as the following. PE equals the cardinality of the event divided by the cardinality of the sample space. And that is the same cardinality as when we first started this class back in chapter two. Recall that NS means the cardinality of S. In other words, the number of outcomes in the sample space. Also, NE means the cardinality of E. In other words, the number of outcomes in the event. That's what we just did in the previous video. In the, excuse me, in the previous example. In the previous example, NS was equal to four because there were four doors. Pick a door, there are four possible doors to choose from. And in survival, was equal to one, since only one door led to survival. Thus, the probability of survival 
equals the cardinality of survival divided by the cardinality of S, which equals one over four. Now you might be thinking, I understood this until you said all this, and now I'm not so sure that I understood it. Trust me, if you understood it back here, then you understand it. All this is doing is putting it in the context of the vocabulary. The denominator of your fraction is the number of choices you have. The numerator is the number of choices you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for one door that leads to survival. Let's take a look at one more example, or one or five, depending upon how you look at it. A bag contains two red marbles, three green marbles, and five, excuse me, four blue marbles. There's a picture of the bag with the two red, three green, and four blue marbles inside of it. Assuming each marble is equally selected, is equally likely to be selected, determine the following probabilities. There is something key that I left out here, and that's what the actual experiment is. I take that back. I did define the experiment. You reach in and select one marble without looking. Assuming each marble is equally likely to be selected, determine the following probabilities. Number one, the probability that you draw a red marble. This is so easy. How many marbles are in the bag? Nine. How many of them are red? Two. If you want a fraction answer, it's over. If you wanted a decimal or percent, you would divide and then move the decimal if you wanted the percent. But as a fraction, it's over. The only time it's not over is when your fraction reduces. B, the probability of drawing a red or blue marble. Well, which ones are red or blue? These are red, that's not what I meant to do. These are red, these are blue. So we're being asked what's the probability of drawing one or the other? Well, how many marbles did I highlight? Six, out of how many total? Nine, the probability is six ninths, but you can reduce that by three to get two thirds. What's the probability that it's not green? Well, if it's not green, then what color is it? Red or blue? This is actually the exact same question as the previous one. Not because its answer matches, but because the marbles that are red or blue are precisely the marbles that are not green. Probability a marble is brown. Well, being a theoretical probability, its denominator is the cardinality of the sample size. So, excuse me, cardinality of the sample space. So nine. And of those nine marbles, how many of them are brown? None of them. It is possible to have zero on top of a fraction. And as long as the denominator is not also zero, then the fraction is equal to zero. So the probability of drawing a brown marble is zero. What does it mean when the probability is zero? Zero percent chance of happening? Impossible? A lot of ways to think about it. What about E, the probability that the marble is not brown? Let's highlight the marbles that aren't brown. Oh, out of the nine marbles, how many are not brown? All of them, nine out of nine are not brown. And as a fraction that simplifies all the way down to just one. Hmm, I wonder what it means when the probability is one. But as you can tell, theoretical probability at its core is very straightforward. Here's a bunch of stuff. What fraction of these things have a characteristic? Here's nine marbles. What fraction of them are red? Two ninths, that's the probability you draw a red marble. It is important to point out that it's, that we need everything to be equally likely. In other words, we can't say, well, this marble doesn't have a good chance of getting selected for whatever reason. This one has a better chance of getting selected for whatever reason. No, theoretical probability works on the premise that each object is, uh, is, uh, has the same chance of being selected as the next one. All right, so in the next video, we're going to talk about a different type of probability called empirical probability. 
and we will relate the two types of probability, uh, theoretical and empirical.